please turn to page 7 of the Kirkhall Center Prayer Book. We'll start with Refuge in Bodhicitta. Follow the order in the prayer book with a reg regular Sunday morning prayer. In the Buddha's Dharma and Sangha, until enlightened I seek refuge through merit from giving and the rest. To aid all, may I become Buddha in the Buddha's Dharma and Sangha. Until enlightened, I seek refuge through merit from giving and the rest. To aid all, may I become Buddha in the Buddha's Dharma and Sangha. Until enlightened I seek refuge through merit from giving and the rest. To aid all, may I become Buddha. May all sentient beings have happiness and its causes. May all sentient beings be free from suffering and its causes. May all sentient beings never be parted from sorrowless bliss. May all sentient beings abide in equanimity, free from bias, attachment, and hatred. To the founder, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer of the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. To the founder, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer of the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. To the founder, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the one gone beyond, the foe destroyer, the completely perfected, fully awakened being, perfect in knowledge and in good conduct, Sugata, knower of the world, supreme guide of human beings to be tamed, teacher of gods and human beings, to you, the completely and fully awakened one, the endowed, transcendent destroyer, the glorious conqueror, the subduer of the Shakya clan, I prostrate, make offerings, and go for refuge. When, O oh, supreme among humans, you were born on this earth, but you paced out seven strides, then said, I am supreme in this world. To you who were wise, then I prostrate. With pure bodies, form supremely pure, wisdom ocean like a golden mountain, fame that blazes in the three worlds, Winner of the best, Lord, to you I prostrate. With the supreme signs, face like spotless moon, color like gold, to you I prostrate. Thus tree like you, the three worlds are not. Incomparably wise one, to you I prostrate. The Savior having great compassion, the Founder having all understanding, the field of merit with qualities like a vast ocean, to you the one gone to thusness I prostrate. The purity that frees one from attachment, the virtue that frees one from the lower realms, the one path to sublime pure reality, to the dharma that pacifies I prostrate. Those who are liberated and who also show the path to liberation, the holy field qualified with realizations who are devoted to the moral precepts, to you the sublime community intending virtue I prostrate. Homage to the Supreme Buddha, homage to the Dharma refuge, homage to the great Sangha, to all three ever devout homage, to all worthy of respect, bowing with bodies as many as all realms, atoms, in all aspects, with supreme faith I pay homage. Do not commit any non-virtuous actions. Perform only perfect virtuous actions. Subdue your mind thoroughly. This is the teaching of the Buddha. A star, a mirage, the flame of a lamp, an illusion, a drop of dew or a bubble, a dream, a flash of lightning, a cloud. See conditioned things as such. Through these merits may sentient beings attain the rank of all seeing, subdue the foe of faults, and be delivered from samsara's ocean, perturbed by the waves of aging, sickness, and death. From 
unto Sheetah's hundreds of God's protectors heart, to tip of this fresh, pure white heap curd like cloud, Olo Sangrag Padama's omniscient king, pray come to this place with your disciples in space ahead on lion throne lotus and moon venerable guru smile brightly with delight pray stay hundreds of eons to spread doctrine as supreme merit field for my mind of faith your wisdom mind sees full range of knowables your eloquent speech adorns fortune it is your beauteous body famed glory outstanding homage to you worthwhile to think of hear and see Pleasant offerings of water, various flowers, fragrant incense, light, perfume, and so on. Oceans of offerings set out and envisioned, offered up to you, supreme field of merit. Non virtue committed with body, speech, and mind, which I have heaped up since beginning last time, especially what has contradicted three vows, each I confess from my heart with strong regret. In time of strife, you strove to learn and practice. Shunned eight mundane concerns, made life essence full. O protector, from depths of our hearts, we rejoice in your powerful great deeds. Then rubble gurus from love and wisdom, clouds densely massed in your dharma kaya sky, pray loose a rain of vast profound dharma on fields of disciples just as needed. May whatever virtue that I fear gathered bring benefit to all beings and doctrine, and may it make venerable Osangragpas essential teaching specially shine forever. Mig made say way ter chem chen resi three make and pay wang po jam tel yon du pung malu jom ze sang we dai gang chem ke pe tsu gen song kapla Lo sang drag pe jab la so wadeb. O glorious and precious root guru, pray take seat of lotus crown, caring for me with your great kindness. Bestow attainments of body, speech, and mind. O glorious and precious root guru, pray take seat of lotus at my heart, caring for me with your great kindness. Bestow attainments common and supreme, O glorious and precious root guru. Pray take seat of lotus at my heart, caring for me with your great kindness until 
supreme awakening remain steadfast. Homage to the exalted three jewels. Thus have I heard at one time. The Blessed One was dwelling in Rajagriha on Vulture Mountain, together with a great assembly of monks and a great assembly of bodhisattvas. At that time, the Blessed One was absorbed in the concentration of the countless aspects of phenomena called profound illumination. At that very time, the superior Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, was looking perfectly at the practice of the profound perfection of wisdom, perfectly looking at the emptiness of inherent existence of the five aggregates also. Then, through the power of the Buddha, the Venerable Shariputra said to the superior Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, how should a child of the lineage train who wishes to engage in the practice of the profound perfection of wisdom? Thus he spoke, and the superior Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, replied to the Venerable Shariputra as follows, Shariputra, whichever son or daughter of the lineage wishes to engage in the practice of the profound perfection of wisdom should look perfectly like this, subsequently looking perfectly and correctly at the emptiness of inherent existence of the five aggregates also. Form is empty, emptiness is form. Emptiness is not other than form, form is not other than emptiness. In the same way, feeling, discrimination, compositional factors and consciousness are empty. Shariputra, like this, all phenomena are empty without characteristics. That is, they are not produced and do not cease. They have no defilement and no separation from defilement. They have no decrease and no increase. Therefore, Shariputra, in emptiness there is no form, no feeling, no discrimination, no compositional factors, no consciousness. There is no eye, no ear, no nose, no tongue, no body, no mind, no visible form, no sound, no smell, no taste, no object of touch, no mental phenomenon. There is no eye element and so forth up to no mind element, up to no element of mental consciousness. There is no ignorance and no cessation of ignorance and so forth, up to no aging and death and no cessation of aging and death. Likewise, there is no suffering, no origin, no cessation and no path, no exalted wisdom, no attainment and also no non-attainment. Therefore, Shariputra, because there is no attainment, bodhisattvas rely on and abide in the perfection of wisdom. And because their minds have no obstructions, they have no fear. Passing utterly beyond error, they attain the final state beyond sorrow. All the Buddhas who reside in the three times by relying upon the perfection of wisdom are manifest and complete Buddhas in the state of unsurpassed, perfect, and complete enlightenment. Therefore, the mantra of the perfection of wisdom, the mantra of great knowledge, the unsurpassed mantra, the equal to the unequaled mantra, the mantra that thoroughly pacifies all suffering since it is not false should be known as the truth. The mantra of the perfection of wisdom is proclaimed. Payata, gate, gate, paragate, parasam gate, bodhisoha. Shariputra, this is how a bodhisattva, a great being, should train in the profound perfection of wisdom. Then the Blessed One arose from that concentration and said to the superior Avalokiteshvara, the bodhisattva, the great being, Well said, well said, O child of the lineage, so it is. The profound perfection of wisdom should be practiced exactly as you have taught and the Tathagatas will rejoice. When the Blessed One had said this, the Venerable Shariputra, the Superior Avalokiteshvara, the Bodhisattva, the Great Being, and the entire assembly as well as worldly beings, gods, humans, demigods, Gandharvas, and others, were filled with admiration and highly praised what had been spoken by the Blessed One. In the holy supreme abode of the Dakinis, test of clairvoyance and miraculous power, Unwaveringly caring for practitioners as your children, homage to the hosts of the three places, the Kinis, Akasamaratsa Shadaratamaya. Tayata, Om, Gate, Gate, Paragate, Parasam Gate, Bodhisoha. Through the power of truth of the exalted three jewels, may all on the side of negativity, such as the four Maras, be stopped. May they become non-existent. May they be pacified. All enemies, obstructors, and hindrances, shanti, kurie, soha. The 80,000 types of obstructors pacified, freed from adverse, harmful conditions, may all be conducive in perfect auspiciousness, bring happiness and well-being here, right now. Saji Yeah.
Namam Guru Ratna Mandalakam Niriyatayami Chudang Sopi Chognam La Jang Chubadu Dagni Kapsuchi Dagi Chunyan Gi Pesonam Ki Kola Pinchu Sangi Drupashu Shrudang Sopi Chognam La Jang Chubadu Dagni Kapsuchi Dagi Chunyan Gi Pesonam Ki Kola Pinchu Sangi Drupashu Shrudang Sopi Chognam La Jang Chubadu Dagni Kapsuchi Dagi Chunyan Gi Pesonam Ki Kola Pinchu Sangi Drupashu Good morning. Special good morning. What is your name? John and Norman. Wow. Very nice to see you again. Not see a long time. <laughs> Anyway, happy, you can say, happy Hidun's birthday, the Wednesday his birthday. Also happy July 4th. Uh, I think a lot of people also went to vacation, too far away. And uh, it's good weather, it's good. They, you know, people enjoy. You know, who live the city, they go to try to go out. Who live the countryside, they try to come to country, <laughs> city, right? <laughs> it's different people mind. I think it looks it's nice. Anyway. Now what is the talk? We talk about maybe fire, firework. <laughs> How can you go to watch a firework tomorrow? Anyway, it's, uh, you know, we all very great honor to <coughs> able to study a little bit Dharma and try to also practice how much we can. You know, always, I always mention, if you like to study, then don't stop, don't push. This is most important. You know, this result of the study Buddhism is not easy. You cannot see depends your our effort but our effort our wish goal is very high but in order to achieve that the goal we have to really effort 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 right make effort but our efforts is very low I think I don't know, maybe I'm very bad to say that. <coughs> but most people study Dharma, the, all the 24 hours, our activities, and to study Dharma, the, maybe never choose the list, less important. Never choose it, right? Yeah, less important. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. You know, most people, most, most people, I don't know, all of them. But we have 24 hours, we have all different <coughs> activities. Therefore, I'm saying that maybe time advice, or time advice, or is it? Cut time? Divide. divide the time. Divide the time, or divide the things to do. I think Dharma is the last one, less important one. 
So you are calm, you are interested, your minds are there, then you can go, you study. Then your mind also maybe not doesn't want, you like to choose that to sleep. Like that, it is, it is not persons uh, intentionally, because this is also reality, because Buddha said five in human, human five, generations. five day generations. This time is five day generation time. Also, there are different many many different ways they uh, describe the five day, day generation times. You know, not all same. The one of the five three generation time is also people pray only with a statue. Means what? Just go there some put the incense, pray for them, that's it. They're all study. Like Buddha's time, it is face by face. People study, people meditation, and then same time, same seed, also they they, they get the result on the Buddha's time because they really effort. Then slowly, slowly, then people just also they study or they pray or they practice to on the books. Then another or more more, more left. Then only a statue means what? You don't study. You don't read the books. You just go to the temple or put your altar in front of the statue, put some incense. Yes. You can see this a lot, right? This is, you know, this generation time. Then there's another one also. We have more developed all our outside activities, right? You look on the gym, right? But Inner, our minds more develop, you know, delusions. Right? Like right now, you know, you can see, you can go to different temples. Maybe Westerns <coughs> got more, more study, right? You guys more study. I think you guys uh, study or practice all the books. A lot of people just go to temple, put some incense, some candles, then this. This is not special Chinese, India, Nepal, Tibetan also, like lay people kind. You know, everyone, of course I'm not, we, we don't say don't do that, but they also respect, they offer the candle, they offer the incense, but they don't really study what, how, Buddha, Dharma, Sangha protect from samsara for us, to us, for us, to us. What do you say? To us, for us. You just protect us. Or protect us from samsara. Right? Therefore, like this time, you know, a lot of people just put some incense, just that's it. Therefore, like, this is it. This is degeneration time. Then we just example. I think maybe this is the 21st century. Maybe 20th century or 1980th century. Century. Is that century? Century. Century. And the people have more delusion. I think this time more delusion. Because right now people are more education, they have more religions. Or more money, more power, more religions. Right? Like, <coughs> you know, right now we can see how you say luck. Like. Because if we have more education, not Dharma education, other education, you know. Then we need more. 
we learn more. We are never enough. We say, oh, that, that. I don't have enough that. I need, I need that, I need that, I need that. Then you know also how you fight. Especially you guys also. Right? No talk. Right, the old man was here. Then Asian, Tibetan, the countries, they fight very far and they loud. Why? You are very bad. When I was a kid, you know, the kids fight, the kids fight the, the, from this side to other side. How do you say? Riba Pacho Sushi? Riba Pacho Sushi? No, not that country. Lumba, a Ripa. Hill. You know the water go down, and this hill, the other hill is different, right? The kids, the yal, each other from here to there. Why you guys do like that? Why? Because they, don't, they have no electricity. <laughs> no, they don't know how to ride. <laughs> they were too far away. Then just the yal. Why you guys do that? Very far away. Like here, we don't do it like that. that you guys, <laughs> then maybe you meet the people, you will like, ah, you look nice. I'm very happy to meet you, but, <laughs> right? This is a, this is a, yeah. it doesn't show up what is, what is you. What, what you really are. Yeah, what you really are. We don't show, we show, we show too, right? He said, nice. when we meet, it's so nice, now, but... Look, especially more education, also they know how you more distort. Look, long term, they fight. They fight to, you know, big guns very far away. Or before guns, they have swords. Then they, this is, the Tibetan, this is the gun. No, this is very strong. They hit you. Then we have swords. Then people are gone. Then that time people are more slowly. But there are no people stay here, destroy for all of the world, other side of the country. Because the more develop, that you know more how you destroy everything. Therefore, you guys stay here. Come, come, come. Come. Oh. Oh. Pujakaro, Pujakaro. Therefore, people have more idea how you things to do. Therefore, more education. <coughs> well, of course, if you do good things, you have more education, you do more good things. But also, you can destroy more bad things. Therefore, this is a really, really degenerated time. But still, we have some interest to study a little bit Dharma, practice a little bit Dharma, <coughs> but it is benefit for us. If we study Dharma, because we get more education to how control our own delusion or our own mind, right? Like, it is takes tar time, not easy. Therefore, I say, if you like to study, try to not stop, but don't push too much. Right? Now you guys study Prada Dharma, couple months, live there, then start again. Couple months, live there, start again. <laughs> Especially your meditation, First, maybe a couple of days, a couple of weeks, you try to very hard. Then leave that. And then a couple of months, then you have something wrong, then you say, oh, I have to go study. Then start again. It doesn't work. Therefore, we are still here. Like we're going to boil the water. We have to turn on the fire. Maybe five, ten minutes, then we boil, then we turn off, then the water become cold again. Then again we have to boil again. Therefore, love that we study, we like try to 
control our delusions. Little bit, then we stop. Then we go in a different, different direction. Like special, this country that people who have always stressed, <coughs> stressed, right? Yeah. Stressed. Why? Because people didn't know how to deal our life. Because there are so many things here. We cannot catch whatever we see, whatever we want. We cannot catch that. Then we might stay here, we might want, but in order to achieve all the, our goals, they need to also a lot of different conditions. Therefore, we do not have all the conditions enough. Then we, what we do? We stressed. We fight. Right? Like example, like this country, I'm not sad, this country. I'm very bad. I have very bad habit. <laughs> Like Western, more developed country has more divorce, right? Like Tibetan, Nepal, I don't know, right now, maybe more. Long term, means maybe 100, maybe maybe one or two percent di divorce. Of course, they're not all the time very happy, very friendly, they're always liking each other, not like that, they fight but they can accept each other, right? They're not just boom. They're not say, oh, I'm, I'm enough. I don't want to be with you, <laughs> it's not like that. But here they don't accept, right? It's a little bit, then, okay, goodbye. Even the people, the marriage, like 20, 30 years, still they're going to get married, get divorced. Very impossible, right? So this is not just person's problem. This is the culture, or this is for how they develop, right? Therefore, more we have more things, more education, more problems. You go to Nepal, you go to India, you go to Tibet. They generally they will poor. Kids play on the on the dirt. You know, when they get some food, they still live on the ground. They're also more healthy. The parents also not all the time like, you know, <coughs> things are very good things, you know, well. You know, food, the live conditions. But the family is a very warm family, like happy family. They enter, they die. But here, we have house, car, food. When you go to shopping, you guys read that the, how you say? The list, they say, oh, how fat, how sugar. Like for Tibetan Indian, like that one, I don't know right now. Because we have no chance to read that. If we find something to eat, you know. Then here you guys go choose, choose red. <coughs> then house we have, when we get cold, we turn on the heat. Hot, turn on the air condition. You know, when people out, they won't go to out. One hour before you start the car on the home, room. <laughs> you know, they keep the temperature there. You know, everything is very perfect. Like I was Tibetan. Even snow, like Boston snow, we have no choice, we have no place to run away. We have to go out to keep taking the cows. Now this is the reason, you know, this country has uh, so many good things or developed things, but it's a lot of problems. You say, where they come from? Who make that? Right? Therefore, so this culture or this how they develop, maybe how the like culture going on. People always think of me, I can do things. I'm, I think when you the study, the school, they always teach for me, 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 right? Then when you grow up, me, me, me. I want that. 
I don't want that. I want to do that. Because of whatever you want, if it doesn't happen, you cannot get all the time. Come on, come on. Then we get stressed, right? It's true or not? Are you guys sometimes stressed? Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. <laughs> you just check, we can just check, you know, how, how that happened, you know. Therefore, you can come here, Namaste, Kesai Tashtele, Namaste, I can speak in Nepal. You can take pictures, it's fine. <clears throat> yeah, go ahead, go ahead, no problem. Yeah. Right? Anyway, we just, you know, think about for our reality, how we live. I think it's not a personal problem. I think that's maybe the culture. Anyway, like that. Now I'm not talking too much for my broken English. <laughs> Otherwise, you guys are talking about that. There were also the, of course, you guys like Westerns. They're not idea, or they're not study at the real reality of the nature, nature of the samsara. Right? The Buddha says, samsara is the, when you sit on the nail, it's comfortable? No, right? Even if we are the sofa, we are not comfortable. Even if it's the chair, also we are not really comfortable. How comfortable the nail? Like this, Buddha said, samsara is the same as the, we, said the, we sit on the nail. Then he said, where is the samsara? Is it Boston, maybe New York, maybe Africa? No, we are, we are in the samsara. This is samsara. Right? What do you think? Do you believe this samsara? The Gurukula Center samsara? <laughs> you say, oh, I don't want to go to Gurukula Center. You say, Gurukula Center is samsara. <laughs> I want to get out of the, get out of the samsara. No, Gurukula Center is not samsara. Samsara is our, God, God is also the lady as well. Within ourselves. Uh, within ourselves. There is, is my body samsara? What do you think? It should be. <coughs> because we have body, we have a lot of problems, right? Maybe we have the kind of Susan Pumbo and Susan Dungan Shuman. We got suffering from our body, right? Are you guys doing like that? We have a lot of sufferings. No, my body is good for me. I'm not suffering, right? <laughs> Right? Even if we don't say body, we just say face. We just say face, okay? I have, I have some, some problems with my back. There's some, some problems with my back. Right? I don't want to go to the morning, I don't want to go to the morning, I don't want to go to the morning. So, um, the fact that we have this body uh, causes a lot of suffering, right? If we don't have the body, we will not have any problems, any suffering. Um, just because of our face, like something's wrong on our face, then we find that unpleasant, and then you know we feel suffering, right? And Gish, let's say he has a problem on the back of his head, he is losing some hair there, and that's his problem. And that's that's because of head, you know, he's having this problem. Right? Are you guys problem? You guys always looking for mayor? Mirror. Mirror. Looking at the mirror. Okay, yeah, Lani. So true, it's our Dumba chip to the marriage tangy, which is tangy ways. So every day you look at the mirror, right? In the morning, when you wake, after you wake up, when you brush your teeth or when you wash your face, you always look at the mirror, right? And then they're in Yamadoch, they're this Madoch, this Japan or Tuna, number some Majishi or what? So if you see some wrinkles on your face or something, <coughs> some kind of pimple or some, you know, like a chubbiness you know, on your face, then you feel unhappy, right? 
Then they said, don't bother you, they can't get the you, they say. <laughs> so therefore, you, you're having this problem, right? You're facing this problem because of having the face. So they said, they think we need to say that sometimes. Is that really, is that true or not? Think about it. <laughs> so because we have faith, therefore we have to work so hard, right? Do you work hard for your faith? Don't worry now. If you're a guy, you have to shave, right? And do a lot of things, you know, for on your face. If you're a woman, you have to do even more, right? So in the morning, you have problem of not you know, finishing uh, to put, up, put on your makeup in time. And then in the evening, then you have problem of not, you know, having enough time to wash away your makeups. <laughs> and then again, you know, you put up a makeup and then in the daytime when you go in the sun, then there's a problem of melting the makeups, right? <laughs> right? This is, I'm, I'm not saying you guys die. That's basically not so. Tell me too loving mother, not the ten was. Yeah, I'm not pointing, you know, uh, individuals, but in general, like that, right? And then just because we are having the face, we have to face so many problems, right? right? And then especially for women's you know, uh, hair, you know, because of the hair, how much problems we have to go through? Right? <laughs> How much money you spend on that, right? This, especially in this country, it's very expensive to take care of your hair, right? So that's the reason why monks shave their hair, because you know, there's a lot of problem comes you know, from the hair, and so therefore Buddha advised to shave the head. But for <coughs> secular people, you know, it is important to have hair, right? Because then it kind of beautifies your body or your face, right? <laughs> don't, don't have cut tomorrow, okay? Oh, Gichi does say hair. Gichi does say hair is very bad, so oh, I'm going to shave. <laughs> don't do like that. This is just, you know, it's not a red word. That's how it is, that's how it is really, right? So I'm, what I'm trying to do here is prove you the samsara, right? So that our body that we have is the samsara. Right? So just talking about the face and the hair, you know, we can we see how much problems we have, let alone all the part of the body that we have. <coughs> so the reason why you know all the results you know from this comes bad is because uh, the cause itself you know which produced this body is bad. So it is <coughs> this true that if there's no good cause, there will be no good result, right? If, a, if the cause is good, the result will be good. If the cause is bad, the result will be bad. It's not, it's not you know, something just Buddha said. <laughs> so <coughs> we say like emotions, like a negative, afflictive emotion, like anger is a cause of suffering, right? So that's because uh, uh, if we become angry, then we feel unhappy, right? So our unhappiness comes from becoming angry. And so when you get angry, also that makes other people you know, angry and unhappy, right? So that other person becoming angry and unhappy is the result of your anger also. So 
And so that's from the negative side. From the positive side, like if we do something good, like smiling at somebody, right? Smiling at people makes them happy, right? <laughs> So, <coughs> like mother, you know, um, I use many different ways, you know, to smile, make a face, you know, a smiley face, uh, to cheer up the child, right? And then when the ch and the child uh, smiles or laughs or cheers up, then mother feels happy also. So that's the result of the smile. And also, like if we help somebody. Eh? somebody you know, else uh, uh, outside there, then that person becomes happy from our help, right? <coughs> so this is the way then, of the things, right? That if the, if the cause is good, then the result will be good. And so what we should you know, train, uh, try or train ourselves to do is that uh, even if we face some problems, we should not stress ourselves. So it is, it is natural for us to face problems you know, because we're in samsara, right? You know, it's, it's a very natural uh, thing for us to face these problems. So <coughs> uh, it's natural for us to face the problem. The problems are things that we don't like, right? There are so many things we don't like and we don't want to experience or don't want to see. That's our problem. So right now you're sitting in cross-legged, right? And slowly it will start to feel pain in your knees, in your thighs, in your you know, uh, feet and so forth, right? So at that time, if you <coughs> think, oh, it's so painful and I have, to be si I have to sit there for so long and this session is never ending and so forth, <laughs> and you are creating more and more problems for yourself, right? <coughs> so at that time, instead of getting, you know, stressed or uh, <coughs> uh, complaining about it, if you just sit, stand up and maybe stretch your leg, uh, or, you know, <coughs> even while sitting down, you can stretch your leg, just like, you know, the position of Tara. You know, she has one leg you know, extended and one leg you know, bent in, so you can sit like that also, if you feel comfortable. Mm -hmm. like so of course we have all these problems, right? Like so, uh, so which things we don't like, we have to see or <coughs> experience. Then it becomes a problem for us. Uh, but <coughs> instead of um, you know, complaining about it, if we um, you know, accept it or face it in a, uh, <coughs> uh, in a, in a positive way, you know, then. Uh, it, it can be solved, no? so it will not become a problem anymore. Yeah. So many of us, we don't know uh, how to <coughs> you know, um, uh, face the problems you know, or how to accept it, and therefore, uh, instead of solving it, you know, we create even more problems to, from that. <coughs> and also it depends a lot on your mind, right? How much you put your mind into that put problem. Yeah, so more, pro more you think about that problem, more problem you can experience. Like for example, when you have a toothache, yeah, and then uh, you're talking with somebody or you're you know, looking at something very interesting, you forget about the pain. You don't feel the pain anymore. But then later you go back home by yourself and then you started to feel pain. Right? What happened? It's not that the pain wasn't there when you were talking with somebody, uh, but it's just that you didn't think about that, right? So it depends a lot on your mind also. <laughs> 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 
So if you harbor your thought you know, around that problem, then the problem increases. You know? Instead, if you think of, you know, you, if you distract your mind from that problem and think about something else, then you know you you will not you know, experience that problem so much because your mind is not on that; it's thinking about something else. So, so you have to use the different kind of methods, you know, to overcome it, you know, uh, <coughs> uh, by accepting it or by, you know, <coughs> uh, uh, reverting, you know, to different things and like that, you know. So you can so you have to apply some means, you know, to uh, overcome it. There's no way you can. Uh, get rid of the problem or overcome, you know, overcome from the problem just by praying or saying, oh, may I have not this problem. So somebody who is sick, <coughs> and, uh, um, and then he goes to see the doctor, and the doctor gives uh, medicine, right? I mean, uh, not exactly sure what to give, uh, so then they try all many different ways, you know, do this, do that, you know, all, all sorts of means they use to overcome that uh, disease or sickness. So we have this uh, a tablet medicine, right? Uh, called Tylenol. So Tylenol <coughs> uh, is a tablet. You know, it's ready. There is made it ready for you to take it. You know, to get it, get rid of your pain. But how much research they have put into, right, to produce that Tylenol, and uh, how many <coughs> uh, means and methods they have used, you know, to produce that. So you know, if you think about that, then this is all. There's different methods, you know, to used or put into uh, produce this Tylenol. So that you can get rid of the pain. But that's for the body, right? The body, the pain in our body. But the problem of our mind, we can't get rid of it by taking Tylenol. So <laughs> So sometimes there are some medicine that you can help, you know, to overcome your stress or things like that, right? And so that's that's it's that's that's really not helping your mind. It's just that the mind, you know, which runs through the nerve system, right, like the channels, uh, the mind, the mountain on the wind, when it runs through the channels, it makes it, it, ma it makes some differences. So what they what this medicine do is it shuts you know, the doors, you know, of the channel, so that your mind doesn't. You know, travel to that to experience that problem. And so, but so sorry, but that <coughs> that only you know uh, solves the problem for a short time only. It doesn't really uh, solve uh, the whole problem of the mind. <coughs> so, because the mind, you know, is not the nerve system. You know, it is. The, there's no the, there's no way you can um <coughs> fix the mind by fixing the physical uh, uh, the nerve system. The mind is a thought, right? So you have to change it by thinking. So the, the happiness you know, of the mind uh, <coughs> is, is produced by mind itself. You know, there's no way you can find it somewhere outside. You know? If you look, go look for outside and you know, go look for the, uh, the happiness, the peace and happiness of the mind outside, you will never find it. You will not be able to search in the Google also. Nobody has found that, you know, to be able to put in the Google. <laughs> so Google, you know, you, you can you can find in the Google because somebody has put it in there, right? If nobody put it there, you will not be able to find it. So you can't upload, you know, that <laughs> that piece of the mind and happiness. And, uh, in the Google. 
And so the happiness and the peace of the mind only comes from mind self. So you produce that you know, only by transforming the mind, the thought. You can't find the happiness there, but you can find the means for the happiness. Right? If you look, you know, how do I become happy in the Google, then maybe you will say, okay, take this medicine or do this meditation and so forth, you know, yeah. and then that way it will, it will give you the information. So what Buddha said is that um, <coughs> I cannot wash away the you know the the sufferings. I cannot take away the sufferings of the sentient beings, and I cannot wash away their sins, the the negative karma that they have created, and I cannot transfer my knowledge or realizations known to them. So how can I help them? It's just by showing them the way, the path, the reality. So if you think about it, you know, then this is really, it accords you know, with the real way of life. So, so when we apply that, you know, to our, you know, uh, worldly life, <laughs> like, like for example, we have a headache, and then we go to see a doctor. Can doctor get rid of us, rid of our headache <laughs> by themselves? <laughs> can they? Can do they have the power to get rid of our headache? So, <laughs> so can he like you know take away all our sufferings? I mean the headache. Can he take away? No. <laughs> We know that, right? But many people we think we do. Many people we think they do, right? So. But if we really think about it, they cannot. So, and then uh, can he transfer his knowledge you know, of the medicine? You know, he has a lot of knowledge about medicine, right? And experience and you know, knowledge about medicine. Can he transfer that knowledge to us? No, right? He if if that's the case, then we will not need him, right? We'll have all the information ourselves. So we'll not need to see the doctor. So on the cop and on the computer you can copy the, the file and then paste it on this folder. And can you do like that? For a person, you know, you copy the knowledge from this person and then paste it into that person's mind? If that is possible, then we can copy the knowledge you know, of the older people, like the experienced and older people, and then put it into a new people, like a new kid, child, and then we will not have no need to go to school, then all the schools will be out of business. Right, <laughs> So you can't transfer like that, right? So you have to study yourself. You have to go to school, you have to study yourself, and then you gain the knowledge yourself. So just like that, the doctor cannot take away the sufferings, right? Cannot take away our pain, you know, cannot no give that knowledge to us. So how do they help us? Right? Just by, by telling us, right? By explaining, okay, so this is the kind of disease you have, this is the kind of medicine you have to take. By telling us like that, that's the only way the doctor can help us. Especially the Western doctors. They know one thing, only one thing. They don't know everything. Right? We have something something here, then they just, we have to go there. So, remember, when we came to the hospital, 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 but here sometimes you have a different kind of doctors. There's a general doctor and then there's a, a specialist, right? So the specialists are only specialized in certain areas only. 
And if they are specialized in head, and you go to talk to them about arm, they, don't, they have no idea. So you have to go to an arm specialist and things like that. So, but it's different you know, for the Tibetan doctors. Tibetan doctor, you know, they, they go through, they know about all the diseases. So if you tell them, they just look at, your, look, look at your nerve, feel your nerve, and then they can tell what kind of disease you have and they can prescribe the medicine. Uh, and so the Buddha is more like that. Yeah? So he knows about all the sufferings, all the cause of sufferings, and he can tell you uh, what uh, practices to do to get rid of those sufferings. So sometimes we think like the member, the, oh sorry, the, the doctor can do it, right? Doctor can take away our suffering. Like for example, they do a uh, operation and they take away the the tumor or things like that, right? So they removed it. They did it, right? Didn't they do it? So they did take away your pain. We will think like that, right? Yeah. But uh, when they you know, remove some part, you know, or something, you know, that makes our body incomplete now, right? <laughs> so anyway, doctor tells us, you know, to, uh, uh, tells us about uh, our disease and says uh, what kind of medicine we should take and so forth. By taking the medicine, then we get rid of the pain or the, you know, the disease, right? Right. And so we consider ourselves very precious. We love ourselves, you know, we you know <coughs> think of ourselves very important. Therefore we try to keep ourselves happy and healthy and long life, right? So we take all sorts of medicines. So some people have 14, 15 bottles of medicines to take every day. <laughs> And some people, they're all the time visiting the hospitals, right? So like in India and Nepal, you know, you see some hospitals empty, you know, no patients. And they're waiting for the patients, no patients to go. But here, it's so difficult. Every, all the hospitals are so busy all the time. And you can't go right away, you know, and see a doctor. You have to make appointment uh, out, you know, a few weeks or even a month ahead of time uh, to see the doctor. It's, uh, it's not, you know, m most of the people who visit the doctors you know, or who are in the hospital are not all sick, right? They're all not, they're not, not all of them are sick, but they have a thinking that, oh, maybe they might get a sick. So they want to go ahead of the time and check out, you know, do the physicals, you know, to see what kind of disease they have. So they go before they have the disease. And then uh, the doctors, and of course, it's one, in the one hand, it's their business, right? So then they, also, they see, say, okay, yeah, come and see before, and, you know, before time. And then <coughs> they say, oh, you have to do this, you might get this, you know, you have to do that, and so forth. And then you, you, you don't have it, but the doctors, you might have it, you might get it. So therefore, you have to do this, and then you have this superstition in your mind. Oh, maybe I'm going to get it, and then you really get it. <laughs> right? Well, don't you know? I'm going to so 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 touch your gas. It's cheap. Hey, something else. Can you mind? Okay, what? So how much more uh, we cherish ourselves? That much more problems we face. Oh, that under three hundred and ten. 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 Three hundred <coughs> so therefore, Buddha said, don't cherish yourself all the time, you know, so, you know uh, uh, and therefore, tans, uh, you know, uh, <coughs> um, um, uh, uh, exchange, you know, exchange yourself with others. So that means like, instead of cherishing yourself, cherish others more. <laughs> Amegi, <laughs> 
<coughs> um, so like, you know, for example, the mother, uh, they cherish, many of you are mothers, so you cherish your child, uh, uh, child so much that you don't feel any pain in yourself, right? Of course, you know, taking care of, because you are, your mind is always focused on your child and you're thinking about the welfare of your child and, <coughs> and you're doing all that, spending all the time doing all the things, you know, for your child, that, you know, all the sufferings that you're going through, you don't feel like suffering. So mothers, do they get enough sleep? Do they get to eat in time? Do they get to rest? No, but they don't feel that suffering. Why? Because they are thinking about their child, their child, right? So when your mind is more thinking about others, you don't feel the pain for you yourself. So yeah, and if somebody tells you to carry uh, five or six pounds of thing on your back all the time for like five, six months, will you carry it? No, right? You will not carry it. But if, and if you're a mother, you carry your child, you know, happily, right? Without, any, without considering any problems. And the, like, you know, she carries, you know, she carries a child uh, for nine months in, in her womb, happily, without any complaining. She, she doesn't say, oh, okay, take this away, I can't take it anymore. You know? <laughs> Instead, you know, then instead, you know, they, she feel even happier, right? Oh, now I'm pregnant, I'm going to have a child. Yeah, and she feel even more happier instead of feeling suffering. And, and, uh, and then because of that, now she has to control so many things. Right? She can't eat the food that she loves to eat, she can't do the things that she loves to do, right? And she doesn't feel unhappy about not, you know, about having to give up those things that she likes to do. Why? Because she's, you know, thinking about the child. Her mind is 100% focused on the child, thinking about the child. Therefore, she doesn't feel unhappy for giving up the things that she loves to do. So, um, and then also the same thing with ourselves, right? Because we love ourselves so much that when doctor says, oh, you don't eat this, you don't do this, and things like that, and, uh, and then uh, we, even though we like to eat those things, you know, because doctor said then it can be harmful to us, then we don't eat it. And we don't feel unhappy about not eating that because we think we're caring about ourselves, right? This is for my, my you know, goodness, so therefore I should not eat it. And I think we think like that. So anyway, it is all in the mind, right? Because we mind we, our mind things like that, therefore we don't feel any unhappiness or suffering. Uh, but if somebody else, you know, not a doctor, somebody else, you know, says you should not do this, you should not eat this, you know, he's saying the same thing as the doctor. Don't eat this or don't do these things, and, and but we don't listen to that, right? And so, like that, you know, only mind can solve the problems of the mind you know? and that can be done by following the advice or the teachings of the buddha so don't you know be uh, a narrow-minded or don't be you know uh, too stressful so have a more open wide you know uh, <coughs> broad mind or relaxed mind and <coughs> so how do you relax yourself? It's by accepting. Right? So oh, this I'm in samsara, this is natural thing to happen. It's not a big deal. If if you know I don't feel happy, that's okay. If like accepting like that. Yeah, then then it doesn't, you know, uh, become a big of problem. Yeah, 
Yeah, so of course, you know, uh, you can't just sit there and say, oh, this is my karma, you know, and I have to go through that. You don't have to think like that. You know, can say, oh, this is, yes, this is my karma that I have to go through that, but I can, you know, apply a means, apply a means to overcome it. Mm-hmm. So if you think like that, then you will not feel so stressed. Right? So the, the problem of the mind, you know, can be only solved by the mind, you know, the, the root problem. You know. Of course, you know, it can help, outside thing can help a little bit, but that doesn't solve the problem. It only helps for a little while, but doesn't solve the problem. So <coughs> it's only the mind that can solve the problem of the mind, and that's 100%. And of course, and that can be done only by oneself. You know, one has to think, you know, uh, develop or think or develop that mind within oneself. Nobody can, nobody else from outside can do that for us. And so, in general, like when we become angry, you know, it, become, it makes ourselves unhappy and it makes others you know, around ours unhappy. So how do we not feel angry, right? How do we not feel angry or how do we accept, you know, when uh, the, the, the situation, uh, when that makes us uh, unhappy or angry? So there are many conditions you know, or causes that may uh, give rise to the anger. But usually it's from the way they speak, the way they look at us, you know, makes us uh, become angry, right? So at that time, then we think that, oh, this person doesn't like me from the way he speaks you know, to speak to you. We feel like, oh, this person doesn't like me, or this person try- is trying to harm me, and so forth. And then, because you think like that, and therefore you become angry. Is it like that in general? So so at that time, how do you think? Like for example, we we make our st- we make others ang- angry also, right? Do we make angry other others angry sometimes by by our way of speaking or our, our way of reacting or uh, you know responding to them, right? We make unhappy, right? So from our way of Talking or you know the, the, from the way we respond to their uh, <coughs> reactions and so forth, we make them unhappy. We make them become angry, right? We make them become angry. But do we have intention saying that I'm going to make that person unhappy or angry? No, we don't have that an- intention, right? So just like that, <coughs> the other person, when you know, uh, he does or says something that, that makes you become angry, he doesn't have the intention to make you angry. And so the best means or method you know, to overcome the anger is think about the love, right? compassion, love and compassion. Uh, towards that person. So when you have love and compassion towards that person, you will not get angry towards that person. So if you don't get angry towards that person, then you will not experience the suffering of becoming angry. Is that possible? So so what do you think <coughs> you, know, you mean by having compassion to that person? So you think, oh, poor guy, he doesn't know what he's doing, right? He's doing it out of, you know, ignorance. Uh, he doesn't know what he's doing. He doesn't know what he's saying. He's doing it out of ignorance. He do, he's not to be blamed, you know, for that. Uh, so if you think like that, then you will not get angry towards him. But, oh, so don't, don't say like that with him, but just think like that in your mind. Right? So if you say, oh, you poor guy, you don't know, you're ignorant, and so forth, then he, become, he, can, he will become angry, right? 
So don't uh, don't say that. But in, if your mind, in your mind, you think like that, that that will help your mind to not become angry. Right. Not to kill anybody. Oh, you poor person. You don't know this. I know things. I know what I'm doing. I know, right? Come in love, love you, madam. So just tell me, yeah. Ninja, Quran, you know, is one of the gentle top and shingle do. You must go ninja. So then it is Kuru Malawachi, and it is Tangi the Sayatakina. And it is Kuru Mada Yawango was. <coughs> so in, from your mind, if you can think like that, then you will not get angry towards that person. So when you don't show anger to that person, that person will not become angry at you either. Right? Then you, you solve the both problems, right? You, you overcome your anger and you also help that person to not get angry. So, <coughs> so if it's a child, right, an infant or a child um, uh, who broke something, then we'll accept that. We'll say, oh, you know, uh, it's okay, honey, don't worry, and things like that. So we, we accept that, right? But if it was broken by an uh, you know, uh, adult, then we become angry at that person. We think that that person did it intentionally. No, but it's the person also did it accidentally. You know, he didn't know he was moving around and he happened to hit the vase and it fell and broke. And so if you think in that same way, you know, then there's no, no difference. Yeah? So therefore, there's no reason to get angry. What do you think? Is something that something that doesn't make sense? Or maybe that, that don't make sense? Like if you really think deeply, you have to think, you know, not just, oh yeah, they said that, oh yeah, maybe that, like. Maybe also we, we know we like that, but we didn't really doing. Try to, you know, try to something that. Otherwise, uh, someone get, someone, your husband and wife, person, girlfriend, get married you. Then also you are not patient, you say, oh, I did it wrong, you did it wrong. The boy become, then the one that say goodbye, <laughs> right? This happens a lot, because we don't have enough to passion. We don't want to accept each other. You know, me, 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 me coming. If one get just step back, they keep quiet at the moment, the other person be able to calm down. Like that kind of thing, so you have to do every day, daily practice. This is not easy, right? We always, we never ever accept adults complaining for us, say, oh, I'm sorry I did wrong. Maybe we said that we don't really accept for our mind. Therefore, we have a lot of problems we have to go in too. This is a one example. If you have very strong compassion for the other, any sentient beings, you don't really get mad for that. Because the compassion and anger is the contradict. They're not same time. Rise. Rise. Same time, one object. They, they cannot rise same time. Right? Therefore, like in a hot and cold. When hot, cold becomes just go away. When they cold, hot be go away, like that. For example, then compassion and angry, the same object, it's completely different. Therefore, you have very strong compassion to someone, you don't get mad. Even you go a little mad, but you don't really get mad from like that. Like mother, the kids may be un until 10, 11. How you, how your son is how old? 10. So you get mad? Not yet, right? But you know, really get mad some of your co workers or maybe someone else. <laughs> no, no, no. You, when I spend a Susan Mishamaji, the Kurosawa, the Susupu, cause that they don't us. So the anger you get you know, towards your child and towards other person is not the same, right? Yeah. There's a big difference in, in terms of the strength of the anger. So, Pula Gana Susan. So because you have a lot of you know, uh, <coughs> caring and you know, love towards your child, the anger you get towards a child is not big, you know, child, big anger in a sense that it will not cause big destructions. So 
Uh, but when you get angry towards that per other person, you don't have that kind of love and caring like you have your ch towards your child to that person. Therefore, your anger is more destruction. Right? This is equal to every day, daily practice. The Buddha teaching, you know, you know, his holiness over there, he's doing four, five hours practice, meditation. We say, oh, his holiness stay all the time like that. He's, he's, he's really killing, you know, last week he said, I'm not just stay there, I'm doing analytic meditation. He's checking, thinking, oh, how they walk, how they walk. The example of, like, compassion, you know, and uh, angry. Like, he, like, Karota. Uh, so <coughs> when you do a meditation on that, you usually do analytical meditation. So analytical meditation means to analyze about that, right? So why, why your anger you know, towards your child is not that strong uh, or that destructive? Because you know you have a love, you are caring, so forth. And then why is it not same as the uh, anger that you get towards uh, other person? And uh, why are the, why the person, why the anger towards other person is more destructive? And uh, <coughs> because you don't have that much love and so forth. So you have to analyze on all these reasons. And that's called analytical meditation. Okay. And then sometimes shambaro nijero da ya, chik shambaro nijero da ya, sometimes that that telangano gum da karo ya. <coughs> uh, and then after that, you know, or you analyze it, and then you come to the conclusion, yes, this is true, I should love it, I should not have anger, and so forth. And then you focus your mind, you, you, know, you stabilize your mind on that thought, and that's called stabilizing meditation. <coughs> so, uh, of course, you know, stabilizing meditation is much more difficult at, uh, at the beginning because you know, you're not used to it and you know you'll not be able to focus your mind on that for a long time. So you just try with four short times, short time, many, many short times at the beginning and then gradually you know, increase the length of time. More okay. and more. Um, <coughs> so, uh, so then if you say, okay, I'm meditating on a patience, and then somebody uh, makes you become, makes you, you know, uh, do something, uh, does something that makes you irritated and then you become angry, then you're not practicing, you're not, you're not meditating on patience at all, right? So just like the, the story where the somebody was meditating on something and then the other person came and asked, what are you doing? He said, I'm meditating uh, on patience. And then he said, what are you doing? And then he irritated him, right? And then he became angry, I'm meditating on, ang and I meditate on patience. Then you're not meditating on patience, you're becoming angry already, no? So it might, might end up becoming like that. So it should not, you know, uh, <coughs> be like that. Okay. This makes sense? No, you have to think about it a little bit, okay? This is really practice. Even if you read that this whole book, so this whole book about you know, <coughs> the stages of the path to enlightenment, if you read it, uh, of course there is a benefit, right? There is a benefit, there is a, uh, <coughs> at least you leave some imprint in your mind uh, or some uh, positive imprint in your mind. So at least you leave some imprint in your mind or some positive imprint in your mind of this uh, uh, text, but if you don't apply it into practice, then it doesn't benefit that much. And then also I try to like explain to you what I think you know, is good for myself to do. So I, whatever I try to explain, whatever I try to explain to you, I try to also to practice in my daily life. So, 
So if we understand the reason why we have to meditate you know, on the loving kindness and compassion, then we see that it makes sense, and then that will you know, encourage us to meditate on loving kindness and compassion. Otherwise, if we are just told meditate on loving kindness and compassion without explaining how to meditate on or what is the reason, what is the benefit, and so forth, uh, then it will be difficult to meditate on them. <coughs> so, so we can also think on the reason why like 90% of the mother will not give up on her child even if she has to go through so much of trouble. Why is that? So, so that is because of her love and compassion towards the child. Of course, there's some mix, you know, in, the, in ordinary people, there are some mix of attachment there. You know, but there's a lot of love and compassion, right? That makes her to do the things you know, for the child, even if she has to go through so much of problem. So other person, even you know, if somebody else, not your child, if other, some other person says, even if he says, like, your nose is not good, then you become so angry, right? <laughs> you, they, are, they can't even say that your nose is not good. <laughs> So someone says, your nose, nose not looks nice, then you get mad, right? Why? This is not his business. What are you talking about? Yeah, I'm not sure what I'm talking about. I'm not sure what I'm talking about. I'm not sure what I'm So it doesn't matter what the person says, right? It, if, do, does your nose become bad if the person says it's bad? Or does it become good if the person says good? No, if what if your nose is what it is, right? Yeah, it, it doesn't matter actually, but it affects us, our mind, right? When somebody says it's bad or good. So, and so that's because you know uh, we don't have that much of compassion and love towards that person. So the boy, mom, you know it's very bad. Not looks nice. We don't much. We don't get angry that much, right? Maybe, kid, maybe he can say. So if, if the child said in front of many people, then maybe she might be embarrassed, right? <laughs> she will not get angry towards the child. <laughs> so that's uh, because you know, of having compassion and love towards the child you know, in the back of her mind. Uh, because th through the power of that, then she doesn't get angry that much. Right. So if the child said, you know, you don't feel you know, uh, uncomfortable or unhappy, thinking that maybe I do have a bad nose. Yeah. But if somebody else said, then you really, you then you get that worry, you know, thinking that oh, maybe I do have a bad nose. <laughs> And then you will look in the mirror and then you ask the people that you believe, you trust, right? So your, your husband, wife, or your friend, and I say, is, this, is, my, is, my, is my nose really bad? <laughs> worry so much. So this is because when somebody else said it, right? And uh, you, you already have this superstition in your mind, thinking that maybe you really have bad nose. Uh, <coughs> but if the child, you, if your child said that, you know, you will not have that doubt. If you not have that superstition in your mind or doubt in your mind, then you will not check with other people. Okay. So this is I'm explaining just uh, you know <coughs> in the way our life is, uh, and the things that we face on a day-to-day -day life. <coughs> So if we, you know, apply uh, our day-to-day -day, you know, experiences into our Dharma practice, then that would be very helpful, you know. <coughs> so what we have to do on a day-to-day -day life is what we, you know, <coughs> study from the Dharma. It's not something separate, you know. You do something else, you study something else. It's not like that. What we study is what we do, you know. So therefore, we have to integrate you know, whatever we study into our day-to-day -day life's activities. 
So that, that's how we practice Dharma, you know, so, so integrate the Dharma into our daily uh, activities. So that's how we, you know, uh, apply yeah. into our day-to-day lives uh, uh, and uh, experience or activities. It's not like, oh, Dharma practice is something that you meditate on, uh, you know, for a certain amount of time or do a uh, 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 certain uh, uh, ritual, you know, rites and rituals, you know, practices uh, for a certain amount of time. It's not, that's not called Dharma practice. You know. Okay. Now I'm going to talk too much. Any questions? Don't, don't think he didn't go to book, okay? <laughs> 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 I talk, we talk old book. So it's all about, you know, what we find in the book. Okay. Yes. Uh, question from, actually, last week we talked about, uh, you mentioned uh, thinking about the germs in our body and then what we eat, we can think that we're feeding them all. And I'm wondering what the corollary is when um, you have bacteria that's a, a problem for the body and take antibiotics. Or if you go to the doctor and they say you should take some antibiotics, it's going to kill germs. What do we think then? It is a slowly something like something like you kill you. <laughs> I mean, should we not take antibiotics? Is actually that's the question. Mm, yeah, yeah. Many community sorrows. You know, people are. I mean, let's say there's some group in my field. Well, there's also a popular element of some person do that. To what some of them, many some of them, some of them, they need to be not to say that they must not take it. Was that now? Can they never do that? Well, there's also a duty. So the senators say that when they need to shoot, shoot with the needle, that's what they need to do. The target is shiny. Some of them. Oh, that's right. The shiny is about to be consumed. So it depends, you know, depends on your levels. Then it depends on how much you can, you know, uh, care about others. Uh, like uh, um, if it's your child, you know, if it's your child, you will not kill. You know, you if. You get, you have, in order to get rid of this disease, you have to kill your child. You don't do that. You say, I'd rather die, you know? So because that's how much love and compassion you have towards your child. So if you think of the bacteria like that, if you can think like that, then of course you will not do that. So it depends on the individuals. It's, that's not like you must do it or you must not do it. That's not like that. And if you can do it, of course do it, you know? If you can do not to eat, not to take the bacteria, I mean not to take the antibiotics, and then let the let the bacteria kill me. Yeah. Of course, yeah, there are practitioners you know, who has, who have been able to do that. I says, oh no no, don't kill the bug. There's like some kind of bug inside their body, and don't kill that. I would rather die than to kill that. You know, so because you're killing a snake to come. Of course, you have to reach that level. But so it's it's hard. Geshe says it's hard for him to say you do it or you don't do it. It's up to yourself. So it depends on your motivation also. If you think that, oh, I'm going to kill this, you know, so I can live long, you know, then it's not very good. But this, if I can live long, I can do more practice, and I can benefit more sentient beings, and, this and, that, and therefore, I'm going to take this medicine. So if you think with, with the positive thought you know, to benefit others, if you take the medicine with that thought, then the medic- taking medicine becomes positive. So if you think that I'm going to take this medicine to kill this, yeah, then the, you know, then it will become intentionally killing, yeah, and then it will be a complete negative karma. So Kunutana Mewachi, Kanji, Zimbala Pemba, Samjala Pembo Shavala, and Yamla Yaboyola, Zubuta, Tendera, Zuboya Mutada which is meant to Sagi Sabna, couldn't do your rose. So instead, you know, if you think that in order to benefit others, in order to do the practice, I need this body, in order to you know, uh, uh, in order uh, for the sake of the benefit of others, I'm gonna take this medicine. If you think that then that becomes positive. 
Mangadar Cheta, Tokyo Cheta, Michel Tesho, the young girls. The thing is, the first other party, and give us other words. And so, just like the story of the Bodhisattva who killed a person in order to help 500 or you know, save the life of the 500 merchants. No? So, like that. In that case, because he did it out of compassion, not only for the people he is saving, but even for the person who he is killing, because that will save the person from creating the negative karma of killing. And so you are protecting him also. Even though you are killing him now, but you are protecting him from creating that negative karma, which will like kill him many more times, right? And so therefore, if you do the, the, that kind of positive you know, intention uh, and strong compassion, then it doesn't become negative karma. Okay? Yeah. He yeah. He is around exactly. He have to check a whole his family. Therefore, he have to he become he have to strong. Otherwise, even he he is not strong. The New England we have a lot of snow. Who can snow shovel? <laughs> even like that, right? Okay. Yes. Uh, gardening. I've never had a garden, and I just. I'm learning how to garden. Worms. I never thought about it. <laughs> I'm always planning a garden, and now we have to shovel. We have just to yeah. raise a bit. And it's painful. I, you know, it, for me to just go there and see the worms, and I'm always, uh, okay, just trying to see where I'm going to hit so I don't cut them. And I don't know what to do with it. It's really hard um, because we are beings, and you know, half the time I you know just hit the shovel and you know I cut one, and it, you know I just say mantras, but you know that's the whole. You know, I've been saying mantras for the you know the last week. You know that's what I'm doing. You know, shoveling for <laughs> five hours, and I know they are there because some of them are so little and. So, uh, so how do I deal with that? You know, I'm always thinking that you know, even though I'm planting you know the lettuce, so I know it's healthier for my family. Um, in the process, yeah, I'm going through somebody, you know, some beings' houses and you know environments, and so the more I learn about it, the more in tune we are with our environment. But it becomes how are we kind to them? How, what practices can I do in this process? It's very hard. It's very hard to say. Usually, we don't get any food without harm any beings, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Even said, and vegetarian and vegan. Some people say, of course, yes, you are vegan. You are extremely nice. Some people know. Also, like them, a lot of it come because my young kids are not also. My young kids, it's very long. They even did it in my young kids, and I told them, no, of course. So, some people who are vegan or vegetarian, you know, they, it's good to be vegetarian, it's good to be vegan. Um, but then, if you think, oh, I'm a vegetarian, you know, if you have that pride, you know, thinking that I'm a vegetarian or I'm vegan, then that's, that's, that itself is bad, yeah. So, but never we don't get any food to without any calm. Even we boil water. The science that they have a lot of yeah. gems, right? Mm -hmm. We kill the the purpose of boiling we kill them. But yeah. we have no purpose uh, I'm going to kill the water to no, kill the gem, they are good water. We have we have no purpose. Well, good for our water, they <laughs> boiling. But they show them no special because <coughs> no, 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 you boiling the water? You kill a lot of many germs there, right? The, the germs in the water? Mm -hmm. That's why you boil, right? You don't drink just uh, straight water, because you think there's a germ. And you say, oh, if I boil it, I will be happy to drink. And so you boil it. So you kill it, but you don't intentionally say, oh, I'm going to kill the germs. I'm going to boil the water to kill the germs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, there was that part of being like that, we cannot work. We can't work. I can't work at all. I'm not rich. That's why I'm going to take China. And then you put it tomorrow. You just have a mind of words. I should do it. You can't work at all. 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 You can
So yeah, I mean, in that case, in your case, especially when you're gardening, yeah, you should just be, you know, careful not to kill the, yeah, the worms. And if you see them, uh, when, when you uh, plow the, the, the ground and then you so then just see them outside and just bury them back into the ground again. Some people they just be better than they uh, dry, you know, with the heat and, and they die. You know. So uh, yeah, so just try your best you know, to not kill it and protect it as much as possible. So then don't, don't pick it up on your hand because you know they need to cool, they need to be cool and your hand has a lot of heat and that can kill also. So some people they kill they kill on the hand and then they stay monitor and blow in it. That's in a way your intention is good but then you're not you know, applying the right method you know, to protect it. Yeah. Okay. And you do when you see just try to put another place. You know what? I just I accept even though I try not to, I accept that I am going to unintentionally kill some of them. But I also feel very grateful to them because they make they enrich the soil. Mm -hmm. So I do I have that feeling, you know, that they're not they're not just worms, they they make the garden better. Mm -hmm. So Okay. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Edel. Edel. It was Edel. Edel. No. Can I go? Editions. Editions. Okay. Then we stop. Thank you. Try to think more. Also, like that also, don't be too nervous, okay? Oh, Buddhism said don't do that. Because I'm Buddhism, I cannot do Don't like that. Try to intentionally harm others. Of course, we even we double. We kill hundreds, billions, billions, bucks. Right? But we're not intentionally harm others. Otherwise, you know, sometimes we talk about Buddhism, especially the Western, completely new idea. They mean more nervous, right? Oh, bad there, you go hell, go hell, you know, then and more nervous. Not like that. Then you're not nervous. What can I do now? What what can I feel my feet? Not like that. So to make study Buddhism with more open mind, more relaxed, <laughs> not just more, like, okay, why? You know, then many things also Lord intentionally to do things. Even you have to, you know, do the you know, sort of negative you know, positive thoughts, you know. Okay? Okay, thank you. Then you stop talking too much. You have to enjoy the your long weekend. Please turn to page 39 for Thanksgiving mandala offering. Saji perti jub ching me to kam ri rab ling ji ni de gyan pa di sang ye jing du mi kte u war gi to kon nam dak jing la chur pa chuk Ye tun la me ku te ra pin ching nam ka trin le chok chur ge pa dan lo sang ken te drin me sa sun gi dro e mun sel tak tu ne gyu chi Ye dam guru rat nam mandar lakam nir yata yami Please come help us find a long name prayer. From my new collection's vastest face that I have amassed from working with effort at this practice for a great length of time, may I become the chief leading Buddha for all those whose mind's wisdom I is blinded by ignorance. Even if I do not reach this state, may I be held in your loving compassion for all my lives, Manjushri. May I find the best of complete graded paths of the teachings, and may I please all the Buddhas by practicing. Using skillful means drawn by the strong force of compassion, may I clear the darkness from the minds of all beings with the points of the path as I have discerned them. May I uphold the Buddha's teachings for a very long time. With my heart going out with great compassion in whatever direction the most precious teachings have not yet spread or once spread have declined, may I reveal this treasure of happiness and aid. May the minds of those who wish for liberation be granted bounteous peace and the Buddha's deeds be nourished for a long time. By even this graded course to enlightenment completed due to the wondrous virtuous conduct of the Buddhas and their children. May all human and non-human beings who eliminate adversity 
and make things conducive for practicing the excellent paths. Never be parted in any of their lives from the purest path praised by the Buddhas. Whenever someone makes an effort to act in accordance with the tenfold Mahayana virtuous practices, may they always be assisted by the mighty ones, and may oceans of prosperity spread everywhere. A short, long life prayer for His Holiness the Dalai Lama. In that snow mountain encircled land, source of every benefit and joy, May Lord Tenzin Gyatso Chen Rezig remain in life till samsara's end. Prayer that spontaneously fulfills all wishes. Chong Yi Ning Shui Zung Du Ju Pe Lam Che Che Embodies all Buddhas, your nature is that of Vajradhara, you are the root of the three jewels. Homage to you, O Gurus. In short, I seek your blessings, O Protector, to be cared for by you from birth unremittingly throughout all my lives, and thus to become your chief disciple, holding every secret of your body, speech, and mind. O Protector, please grant that all be auspicious for me to be foremost among your very first circle of disciples wherever you manifest Buddhahood so that all my temporal and ultimate wishes without exception may be effortlessly and spontaneously fulfilled. In all my lives, never separated from perfect gurus, may I enjoy the magnificent dharma. By completing the qualities of the stages and paths, may I quickly attain the state of Vajradhara. Furthermore, in life after life, may I, pleasing him in return, be forever fostered by an accomplished Mahayana spiritual master, the source of every virtue of this world and beyond. In his care, may I acquire in him a firm, unshakable faith, pleasing him by every means possible, doing nothing even for an instant to disappoint. May my spiritual master impart to me every instruction and every teaching in its entirety. Having understood them faultlessly, may I practice them and be able to bring them to perfection. May I never even for a moment fall under the sway of malevolent teachers and misleading friends. Having developed in every life belief in cause and effect, renunciation, the Bodhi mind, and a pure view, May I embark upon them continually with effortless experience. In every life, may every virtuous act gathered by way of body, speech, and mind be causes solely for the welfare of others and for the purest and highest enlightenment. Page 50, prayer of dedication. Oh, sorry, 57, page 57. Through this virtue may I swiftly, having gained Guru Buddha state, place each and every sentient being without exception in that state. Precious Supreme Bodhi Mind, may it where unborn arise, and where born never decline, but increase forevermore. Page 75, Ming Se Ma. 
Thank you, Geshe-la.